welcome to Gemstone Tarot. This is your daily tarot for Monday, the 6th of... I want to say April all the time. 6th of May, 2019. Okay, we are still in the 80s. I want to do a little... can't really break dance. I want to do that thing, you know, when they go like that and then the other one goes like that and then it's all a big, like, ripple thing. There you go. I sort of did, like, a, a broken worm. <laughs> Maybe that's what they'll call it. The broken worm. Okay, I might call this video the broken worm. Who knows? This is interesting. What did they call it? There was an 80s video, not video, film. I think it was called Reversal of Fortune. And it had, if you know, who did it have in it? I can't remember his name, but he's a great actor anyway. And I think it was called Reversal of Fortune. You know what I'm like. And it was about someone trying to get rid of millions of pounds, millions of dollars. Um, and what I get for this reading already, apart from the broken worm, is a reversal of karma. That would be, that I suppose, that could be karma and that could be a reversal of karma. We've got the fool and the world. That's the beginning and the end of the major arcana. Now, if we think about Oiroboros, the snake that eats itself, and then I think about worms. And what I was thinking about with the worm was when you are little and you're troweling around in the garden and you inevitably, maybe this was just me, you cut through a worm and you find it a bit devastating and then... An adult will inevitably tell you that two um, you know, that a worm can kind of grow into two worms, which I'm thinking is probably a lie, okay? All right, spoiler alert, just in case. This is just my thoughts on it. I think it might be a lie. So let's think of Oiroboros, Oiroboros as a worm, because snake worm, you know, thing that eats itself, whatever. This is a weird concept that I'm getting into here. When I get the world in reverse and the fool in reverse, it is a reversal of karma. It's almost like, do you remember on old video recorders when you used to do review and it'd go and you go backwards and you go and you could go forwards. It feels in a sort of a quantum way like we're getting a flashback of a whole cycle of karma all in one go, like it's going blah, 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 blah. Not, I would like to say in front of us, but I sort of mean through us. I know, it's going a little bit woohoo and esoteric, but that's what I'm getting because the fool in the world, the fool is the zero card. And the world is 21 and that is, if it was in the upright, that's where you begin and that's where that's the end of the cycle and then it comes back again. When they're both in reverse in the middle of the reading, it's that. <laughs> I'm in a very mimey mood. Okay, it's going backwards because look, I've got the six of cups in reverse. That is the karmic card. It's an emotional thing. Emotional karma of some kind is going backwards. Justice in reverse. That is my major arcana karma card. Major arcana karma card. Okay. Justice, of course, represents Libra. And a lot of my readings recently in the daily sense have gone back to the double full moons in Libra that we had last one being on the 19th of April and I feel like a lot of this goes back to this karmic balancing of the scales. If we look at that, that looks a bit like the magician in this particular 1980s cosmic tarot but it's in the reverse. Six of Cups is in the reverse, we've got Ten of Wands in the reverse. Karma, 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 it is shirking karma, literally shirking karma off your shoulders. This is what's followed you around. This is bad habits, bad patterns. This is healing from them as well in quite a painful kind of a way. I mean, what other kind of way is there to heal, it seems, but it's, it's being held. It's being held. 
the we got the lovers as well this may well involve choices about love and relationships <laughs> major arcana the lovers this is quite a chaste lovers card isn't it everyone's got everything on in fact she's wearing some kind of dare i say a satin tank top yeah and he's got a bandana on which you know i just love me a bandana wherever i can get one that is a really good bandana as well okay the lovers the choice the card of gemini also the card of dualism and that's what i'm getting i'm getting like there are two worms two oiroboros two cycles and we're kind of going from we're ghosting from one to the other and I don't know how that happens, of course, it's not just like we catch a tra you know, cosmic train and we go from one to another, but somehow we are. And this is, is causing this karmic revision. Now, we've got temperance, major arcana, and temperance is always, for me, a message about playing with the universe, somehow letting these forces use you as a conduit move through you in a sort of a graceful fashion which is difficult because you know when we're talking in the 3d world as humans we do like to have some we like to have the illusion of control okay of course we don't really have much control but we like the illusion of it it helps to keep us safe and also as Eckhart Tolle or is it Eckhart Tolle I don't know I never know um but anyway him the power of now He's always talking about the ego as the pain body and this feels to me like letting go of the pain body and the ego. We've got the five of swords. <coughs> See, as I talked about the ego, I wanted to sneeze. We've got the five of swords. Five of swords for me is a card of fragile egoic states. It's uh, Venus in Aquarius. It's a fear of letting go. It's a fear of going with that feeling and flow and temperance, which is, you know, Sagittarius, it's Jupiter. It's more expansive. It's more risky. There are no guarantees. There's no control. So the only thing that might happen, well, plenty might happen in this scenario, but one particular thing to look out for is that five of swords, which is the need to control the macro, the minutiae in your life. Yes, Queen of the Night. The Queen of the Night is the shadow side. You always pull, well, you try to pull another card when you get the Queen of the Night. <laughs> the Heartless Love with the Queen of the Night. Okay, this is the fairy that is like a blue ghost who goes around the forest constantly searching for an empty love, for a heartless love, for a lost love, for a love that's gone, which is some, which is to do with the queen of the night, which is to do with the shadow side, which is to do with karma. It's to do with karmic relationships. It's a ghostly cycle, you know, that's what it feels like with this reversal of karma. It feels like we're somehow shedding the skin of a ghostly cycle. I love it when we get this card. Okay, the oracle card from Wisdom of the Oracle that we get is time for a nap. That is a card of physical surrender, okay? It's what happens to us um, when we're making other plans, John Lennon said. It's what happens to us when there's this much going on and we try to manipulate and control and we realize that that's a fairly um useless kind of activity or a frustrating kind of activity and we surrender and we drop it and sometimes that literally means when you can't think of anything else go to sleep just nap it off just give up just step down just surrender okay temperance sometimes the only way to be temperate is surrender somewhere in this there is a choice there is a decision it's probably to do with relationships but you know not just yet 
Healing with the Angels Oracle Card Meditation. And for me, that goes with having a nap. It's quietness, it's stillness. It's whatever your form of meditation is. And I think mine is probably napping or sleeping. For some of you that are more advanced than I am, you can probably do conscious meditation, which is probably the gold standard of where it you know, should be at. Wowzers, people, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the wiggly bell and leave me a comment about that reading because I get that that was a little bit whoop, but that's the way it goes sometimes. I'll see you soon. Namaste.